OK, welcome to this, the C++ Advanced Design and Implementation in Quantitative Finance course. Uh, this is a course of 10 modules. Um, I'll go into some detail about what those are in a moment. Um, but the, the aim is to cover many of the main um, design and implementation techniques that you need in implementing um, quantitative systems in finance. I'm going to focus specifically on, on two numerical methods, uh, simulation and lattice methods. So we'll build up towards the end a, um, uh, a rather powerful um, set of applications that can be adapted and extended to fulfill a variety of needs. So um, I'm going to be talking about in this set of notes uh, an introduction. The software I use to um, as, as a vehicle for the C++ is something called Dev C++, which is a, a freeware IDE. Um, it's uh, easy to use. Um, the code I run is compliant with uh, all other standard uh, applications. Um, so you should find the code runs with Visual C++, uh, things of that sort. Um, but it's set up, it arrives, ready to run with Dev uh, C++. Uh, so I'm going to be describing Dev C++. Uh, to you. Um, I'm going to talk briefly uh, about the structure of a C++ program and then uh, have a f I have a few overheads about layout. Um, this is something that I stress. Now the presumption uh, I hold here is that um, you are familiar with C but maybe not so familiar with object oriented concepts in C++. So um, with that in mind, I, I shan't be talking very much about basic C++ syntax, uh, which I suppose corresponds to basic C syntax. Um, I, I will start going into details when we talk about objects. So um, the emphasis then is on object-oriented programming and practical implementation. Uh, the structure of the 10 modules is to start off with a very simple procedural Monte Carlo as a single function in a single, single main, and that develops into something with uh, the best part of a, of a, of a hundred dot CPPs. So it turns into a very large application at the end. Now the version of Dev C++ I'm running is 5.5.3, which is the latest version. Uh, but uh, this will run under previous versions of Dev C++. Um, the code is C++11 compliant, although most of my code, I think all of it, is compliant with C++03, so I don't use specific C++11 features. These are not necessary for the sorts of applications I'm getting involved with. Oops, right. Um, OK, so I think I'm safe in sticking with 03 for the purposes of this course. Uh, textbooks to accompany this. I, I, the material isn't based around any particular textbook. Uh, one which I do recommend, however, is uh, Professional C++ by Gregoire, Salter and uh, Klepper. Um, uh, this goes through various editions and the number of authors appears to change through time. Um, however, this is a, a good book. It's, it's got reference-like features, but it also has narrative explanations and, uh, and lots of examples. Uh, a more basic book is Accelerated C++ by Koenig and Mu. Um, and of course the basic, um, more general book, not specifically C++ on design patterns, is The Gang of Four, um, which you may have come across. I will not be referring very much to these three books. Uh, Alexandra Scou, um, Van der Voort and uh, Josutis, and, and Wilson. In particular, the first two are very sophisticated books indeed. Um, some of the concepts of the design factory, um, of the template factory, come from Alexandre Scou, um, although I've adapted somewhat uh, some of the things he presents there, um, hopefully to simplify um, as we go along. Um, I do use templates and template specializations, but nothing as complicated as, as is carried out in that particular, particular book. Uh, there, is, uh, there are online <coughs> uh, material um, for the more basic stuff, indeed for the more sophisticated stuff. So there's a website called C++, 
where the plus and the plus are spelt out, which is a, a, a useful set of material that you can find. But the, it, searching on any C++ keyword, C++ type name, will, will give you a lot of material. Uh, for instance, on type name in C++. Right, here is the structure of the course. Uh, I'm going to start off uh, in this first module with a very simple Monte Carlo. This really is to introduce um, the ideas of, uh, of Dev C++, layout, simple things like that, consolidating ideas. So there shouldn't be all that much new material in this very first example, uh, though I do discuss the nature of um, simulation as regards option valuation. Module two, I'm moving on to now introduce objects identifying the objects in the C++ uh, version of, of the Monte Carlo um, application, talking about basic uh, um, syntax of objects in C++. In Module 3, now developing the basic structure is a bit of a vague title, but that just means I do more of the same. It's more options, uh, much more sophisticated, well, up to Module 4, where I finally introduce polymorphism. You cannot use objects unless you use polymorphism. Um, there's not only do objects enable you to do polymorphism, uh, unless you are polymorphic, there's not much point to objects, uh, really. Well, up until Module 4, we're with the Monte Carlo application. But in Module 5, we come on to the lattice application. I implement a trinomial lattice. Uh, we identify the, the objects. Uh, in, in this application, uh, and integrate them into the, uh, the simulation application. Now that leads on to, in Module 6, topics of, around the rule of three. Uh, in, in a lattice application, it's quite useful to be able to have some kind of data structure uh, index, with indexes which go from minus n up to plus n, for instance. Unfortunately, C++ data structures start at zero and go upwards, which is a bit of a constraint. So in module six, uh, I use this as, as a vehicle to discuss the rule of three and to introduce an array class which does have variable array bounds. So it's uh, something useful, something that's used in the lattice application. Um, very useful, in fact, because it gets rid of the need to use offsets to go from minus n back up to zero. You don't have to add on n anywhere, thank heavens. Um, and, and we get to discover the material we need in order to copy classes, assign classes, things of that sort in the canonical fashion. Uh, module 7 um, is more structural. Uh, we are polymorphic in the application so far. Module 7 introduces polymorphic input and output. So we have a separate layer in the application just to handle um, where things come from and where things go to when you're inputting and outputting. So at that stage, I'll be talking about file I.O., for instance, uh, in addition to um, uh, specialised um, factories for I.O. Up to, modules, uh, up to module 7, indeed module 8, uh, I do introduce a factory object, but the factory is a, is a pseudo factory. It's not a polymorphic factory. Um, it has knowledge of all the possible uh, objects it can create. It has all their .h's, hash included, and that isn't very satisfactory. So I want to build up to introducing a template factory, which happens in module 10. In order to do that, I have to talk about um, templates, generic programming of templates, uh, and I also have to start talking about some more general design patterns. Uh, so in module 9, I'm looking at a, a non-template a non-template factory. In module 10, it's a full template factory. And indeed, I have some extensions to the basic structure. So at this stage, I, I talk about valuing a book of options, for instance, rather than just uh, a single option. Um, I talk about introducing uh, further processes and um, further types of, uh, of speed-ups into the Monte Carlo and into the Lattice application. Uh, OK, so that's an overview of what we'll be doing over the next uh, 10 modules. Now, this is an introduction to Dev C++. Uh, I'm going to run through these overheads fairly quickly. So if at any stage you find that I'm going too fast, uh, please pause and uh, uh, view the, the overheads and then resume 
uh, catch up with what I'm saying by, by putting your finger on the pause button. So, running C++. This is a, uh, 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 an app that I've used quite a lot over the last few years. It's, it's very cheerful, I, I think is the best way of putting it, and it's certainly cheap as it's, as it's freeware. Um, the compiler messages, as usual, are not always all that helpful, but then are compiler messages all, ever all that helpful? Um, the use, the built-in help could be a little bit fuller, um, and, and certainly it's not sophisticated as Visual C++, for instance. Uh, one thing it doesn't have is the ability to interact with Windows, um, so it's not possible to use forms, for instance, but we shall not be using that, uh, we shall not want to use that uh, facility here. But it's very easy to construct projects that run from console, uh, and it has <coughs> the full functionality of C++ 11. So I'm all in favor of this. Uh, other things, uh, Ball and Builder, um, more sophisticated. Um, at one stage, uh, this was um, a bit standard non-compliant, uh, but perhaps that's changed recently. Uh, Visual C++, um, widely used, of course, and my code should run with Visual C++, um, but I, I support only um, running the code with Dev C++. Now, to get hold of, the, uh, of, of, the, of Dev C++, it's available at the time of speaking, which is uh, uh, in 2014, from the website indicated here, sourceforge.net. Um, and there's a file, 43 megabytes to download, uh, which when you run it, will install uh, Dev C++. Uh, occupies a bit over 300 megabytes. So it's not too bad. Uh, here's the, the setup menu when you click on the setup button, when you, when you execute the uh, setup um, app. Uh, you need to first of all select a language, and English is my, my language of choice, um, uh, but that's not compulsory, I guess. There's nothing objectionable in the license agreement. Um, click all components. Um, there's a little box at the bottom, which uh, if you scroll down, there's another little box at the bottom, which uh, you tick if you want to deinstall um, previous um, versions of Dev C++. Um, so you may or may not want to do that depending on what you've got on the machine already. Um, then you're asked to install. I just use the destination folder by default and uh, click on the Run Dev C++, uh, tick that box, um, because there are some options you want to set up. Uh, so, um, first time configuration. Again, it asks you to choose the, the language, and it enables you to choose original English. I'm not quite sure what non-original English might be, but I, I speculate. Um, the theme, I choose uh, the GNOME icons and the classic colour. So um, when I have screenshots in this, uh, in this course, you'll see those particular ones. Um, if you choose different icons, then you'll see something different. So it's up to you what you choose at that point. Um, it then asks you a very important question. Um, do you want to catch header files or not? Well, please click on don't cache anything. Um, it takes a long time to install if you don't tick that box, and it's not clear to me what the advantages are when you actually do it. Um, but there, there are some theoretical advantages, but, but uh, please uh, make sure you, you don't cache anything. Uh, and that's essentially it. Very easy to install. When you do it, this is what will flash up onto your screen. Uh, an empty project. No project is, is there. Um, there are a number of menu items along the top, including uh, project and tools, which you'll be using to set options uh, for Dev C++. Again, a lot of these options might be a matter of personal taste, um, but I've found the options I'm going to discuss to be the more, the more useful ones. So, um, for instance, uh, go to Tools, Compiler Options, Settings and Warnings tab. So, Settings here, then Warnings. Um, and make sure that the, um, the uh, pedantic flag is ticked. Uh, this means that your code is going to be compliant and transferable uh, to other applications. 
Um, you can also set that in the project menu uh, where it's, uh, there's a similar set of choices. <coughs> it can be useful to generate, to generate debugging information. That comes under settings and linker. So with the little drop down toggle here, choose yes rather than no. Um, if you're not developing, then do not tick that. It takes uh, longer to compile with that box ticked. Um, and the applications, the .execs that you, you get are larger. So it's not desirable for, for production code. However, when debugging, yes, then, then do it. What I tend to do, in fact, is to keep this turned off until I find a problem. And when my code stops working, I go, I go back in and turn it on until I've solved the problem when I turn it off again. Um, so in the tools and environment options, um, you can set the theme to GNOME if you haven't already done so. There's another option, pause console programs after return, which is the box, uh, where's that box? Uh, can't see it on, on here. Oh, there we go, pause console program after return. Um, this stops the console window from flashing out of existence when the program finishes. Um, I, I keep that unticked, but you, you may wish to tick that. Um, uh, I, I, I have a, a little function that keeps the window open at the end, so, so I don't need that, that ticked. Um, other things, um, I like to show compilation while I'm running. Um, I like to default to C++. I like to have multi-line tabs in the editor. You, you can choose the options you prefer. Um, on this menu, this is the editor options, general. Um, this, these are the set of options I like to have ticked. Uh, I like to auto indent and I like to have the right margin enabled. This shows a line coming down the right hand side of the screen at 80 characters. So it helps to make the code tidy if you, if you like doing that. I don't like the use of the tab character. Um, one reason for that is I, I often paste code from DevC++ into Word. And when I do that, the tab character space setting in Word might well be different to that in DevC++, and it, the code starts looking bad. But if you just have spaces, then everything's fine. Uh, I also find it a pain to have um, brackets matched. If you tick the highlight matching braces, then it will always, when you click on one bracket, show you the, the, the matching bracket, if one exists. That's, well, you might, you might like it, but I, I find it's a bit, bit distracting. Uh, I also don't like the symbol completion part. Um, that can be useful under some context, but just for my taste, I, I don't like it. Right, so uh, if you've got the option set up and you've just loaded up DevC++, then you can create a new application. Um, so let's see if I can follow along to this. So here is my Dev C++ icon, and this is the uh, uh, Dev C++ as we have seen. Adjust this so it fits on the, the window a little bit. Uh, if you go to File, New, and Project, then you get the window that prompts you to create a project. Um, Constant application is the one to go for. Notice the C++ project is chosen by default. You can choose the name if you want at this stage, but I'll just uh, click on this to show you what Dev C++ comes up with. Uh, you're asked to save it somewhere. Uh, I'll choose to, uh, uh, let's see, here's my, here's the, uh, I'll create a new folder, which I'll call examples. And inside this folder, I'll create another folder called uh, first proj, for example, and save. I can, of course, change the name down here if I want to, but I, I shan't bother. 